see, we'll go to the la last case scenario on preterm labor, and then we'll have a small discussion on PPRM and stop. So, in this case, 26-year-old DCDA twin, 30 weeks of gestation, presents with uh, lower abdominal pain since morning, vital stable, uterus overdose naturally, 36 weeks, fetal heart and everything sounds are normal, contraction seen, two contractions is lasting for uh, in 10 minutes, no bleeding, leaking, cervix soft, uh, posterior mid position, posterior 50% efface, two finger loose, membrane plus head man. How will you manage? It's a twins. Okay. It is 30 weeks, right? And she's got, she's an established preterm labor. She's getting very good contractions and all that. And cervix is also showing changes. So in a patient like this, I will first give steroids. Okay. I will give tocolytics for 48 hours. The minimum amount of tocolytics that you give is for 48 hours. Um, and then I will do the NICU counseling. Very, very important, the counseling, because you must uh, see whether they can afford the NICU care and the thing. Then I will watch for contractions and I'll see. If she's progressing, then I will start magnesium sulfate also. So everything I will do for this patient. The steroids, the tocolytic and the magnesium sulfate is ideal for this patient. Anyway, madam, uh, we've discussed, uh, we have not discussed about tocolytics. Now let us have the last just current tocolytic and when we'll go to PPR. Okay, fine, fine. So, uh, uh, tocolytic, uh, as you told, it is uh, not recommended before 24 weeks. Uh, before mm -hmm. 24 weeks, like 2022 mm -hmm. and all, we don't usually, uh, ACOG also doesn't recommend, I think, before 24 yeah. weeks tocolysis. Yeah. So, uh, is there any upper age limit? See, tocolysis, no need of tocolysis after any weeks or 34 weeks or 36 weeks, something is there. Lower you told, before 24 weeks, no need to have a tocolysis. Is there any upper age limit? I guess no, ac age limit. actually 37 weeks, you know, anytime the patient comes up to 37 weeks, you can always give a tocolytic. But don't give a very prolonged tocolytic. That, that today, the... today, there are only two indications for a tocolysis. One is for the steroids and one is for the transfer. Okay. To okay, transfer okay. the patient to another center. Now, if you ask me, do you give, Dr. Serena, do you give tocolytics? Yes, we do give. We give it for 48 hours. Max, we give it for a week. Okay, okay. okay that okay. is all. After that, you should not give it because there's something called a tachyphylaxis. You know what that means? It means that even if you continue to give the tocolytics, you've got more amount of the bad effects of the tocolysis and it will have no effect. No effect. All the receptors will be already yeah. uh, so that further you give no use of it. Now we come to the major part. This, what do you prefer, madam? Now, or what the recommendations say? Which tocolytic? Yeah. Now, when you see there are various tocolytic that are, but I will tell you, I, I don't want to confuse you all too much, but I will just tell you what is very important. Today, if you ask me what I give, we give nifedipine. The calcium channel blockers are the best. And how do you give it? We give 30 milligrams stat and we give 20 milligrams eight hourly for 48 hours. So that is the dosage that is recommended. Now, along with this, uh, uh, what is this? Uh, uh, yeah, nifedipine. So that is the dosage for nifedipine. And as I told you all, the recommendation, if you give it for more, it is left to you. That is your discretion. But all that you need, give it is only for 48 hours. And as I told you, only for the steroids and for a transfer to a center for where there is NICO facilities. The next tocolytic, which is coming up in a big way, is actually endomethacin. Indomethacin is coming up in a big way, but please remember there are a few things to remember about indomethacin tocolysis. The yeah, importance of indomethacin is you can start up with 50 milligrams and then you can give 25, 25 milligrams four hourly again for 48 hours, but don't give it after 32 weeks. Very, very important. Premature closure of yeah, premature closure of the ductus venosum is there. So we should not um, ductus arteriosus and uh, ductus arteriosus. Okay, so, uh, and also remember, because Ashwath asked me that about tocolysis, there are some contraindications also for tocolysis. Now, if there is an intrauterine fetal demise, then there is no place. If there is any fetal anomalies, there is no place. If there is a non-reassuring fetal heart trace, there is no place. If the patient has got choreamnonitis, there is no place. If there are any medical contraindications like a heart disease, be very careful when you're giving heart disease, okay? In, there are uh, two things you should not give it in. Um, be careful when you give it. One is in heart disease and in diabetes. In heart disease, it, they might push it towards a failure because of the tachycardia. And the patients with diabetes can go for diabetic ketoacidosis. And when you give the thing, the beta sympathomimetic drugs have actually gone, taken a step down now. Because there was a high incidence of pulmonary edema and uh, uh, tachycardia. That is, it. initially they have tachycardia and then it pushes them towards a pulmonary edema. So, these are all the, uh, these are the two tocolytics which we normally give. 
and, and madam one more thing and uh, endometriosis when you yeah. told uh, yeah. uh, it causes uh, oligohydramnios also madam yeah correct uh, yeah that is very important see about endometriosis two two three things i want to say don't give it beyond 72 hours one don't give it beyond 32 weeks two three please remember when you're giving it if you're whenever you're giving it you should do the doppler monitoring to see whether the ductus arteriosus has closed okay and also watch the light like as ashwat was saying because what it does is it produces a kid, kidney failure of the fetus so what happens there is less of urine from the fetus oliguria of the fetus and so there is oligohydramnios also so don't give endometriosis is very good very good but give it for maximum 48 to 72 hours before 32 weeks. but we have to be careful in patient is having some platelet disorders platelet yes. count is low and all yeah yeah there so. are some contraindications mm -hmm. see the contraindications for endometriosis is you should not give it in platelet dysfunction bleeding disorders in liver and renal disorders in gastro in the ulcerative diseases and also think twice before you give it in an asthmatic patient so uh, these are all the contraindications for endometriosis now coming back to the tocolytics Another uh, tocolytic which uh, we uh, which we took, you know, Ashwath knows that uh, care of Ashwath. We actually had an ICMR study on atosiban, which is an oxytocin receptor antagonist. We were very happy with the drug, but the only problem with um, with uh, ox or, and uh, atosiban is that it is expensive. Otherwise, it has got no side and, effects. And uh, patient has to be admitted in the labor room for forty eight hours. That is a uh, so initially what we used to do is that we give uh, a bolus dose of 6.75 then uh, that is that is just given in a one minute then next uh, what we give is that 37.5 in next three hours you have to give that is high dose infusion then the rest 37.5 we have to give in 48 hours okay, so 45 it has to be monitored, uh, monitored inside the labor room so the patient requires an admission not like uh, easy like a nifedipine or a beta sympathomimetic drug that is all but it is a wonder drug uh, what about madam magnesium sulfate and tocolysis oh good magnesium sulfate also can be used as a to but it's a very weak tocolytic but remember one time the american college had only approved of magnesium sulfate as a tocolytic but you can give it it's a slightly higher dose okay for tocolysis so uh, the and its tocolytic action is pretty uh, uh, weak then there are beta sympathomimetic drugs, duvadilone, no? that is your uh, isoxypurin. Isoxypurin also can be given. We do give it. You will have to give it as 40 milligrams in the drip. Yeah, that is two ampules you will have to uh, add it in the drip. And we give it, but only one word of caution. Don't allow the pulse rate to go beyond 120. When you're giving a duvadilone infusion, if it goes beyond 120, then the bad effects of the isoxypurin will come in. So please remember that that is one very, very important thing that you should remember. Then, of course, the other drugs, with there, are, there are people who have tried nitric oxide donors and all that. We have also tried some nitric oxide patches and things like that. So all that is all, you know, secondary. Two important things. One is calcium channel blockers and endometriosis. Atosiban, if you have got it and if you can afford it and if it is freely available, you can give it. The rest of the things are all secondary. Madam, uh, before uh, concluding this preterm labor part, uh, yeah. last, Madam, nowadays uh, many studies and there is something like Western studies of Arabin pessary. Arabin means Arabin pessary. The cervical pessary is in preterm labor. What is it? Or cervical incompetence? Like, yeah. What is your? Yeah. Own? See, the Arabin pessary's main action is when the pessary is put. You no, know, it changes the angle. Angulation is changed. So what happens is there is no direct transmission of the intrauterine thing onto the cervical cervix so but as of today it is used only in research settings many people have tried a lot on they've spoken a lot about arabin but as of today the standing for arabin pessary is that it is used only in research settings and its action is it changes the angulation between the uterus and the cervical uh, that angulation is altered and thereby it has got its action that is how it acts okay last question uh, in the preterm labor see patient has a acute preterm labor you have con we have controlled it so what instructions you will give the patient see 30 31 weeks or 30 weeks wait 28 weeks whatever it is we have controlled that preterm labor with the tocolytics and mm -hmm. now uh, you have to advise uh, should we keep the patient in the hospital should patient can be yeah. discharged or very what good. are the things very good see very important after the uh, preterm labor has been controlled she has no place in the hospital she can go home that is very important 
and then you as i told you sometime back you know the she'll have to continue the uh, uh, if at all she's been on progesterone that she's got to continue the progesterone she's got to continue other medications no bed rest and as i told you no coitus no um, um, no uh, heavy work no going for work no going for work all these things are very very important and regular checkups and then you carry on you'll be surprised sometimes they will go on they will reach your full term for all what you know so ask her to come for regular checkups and ask her to be at a place where she is close to a medical checkup in which she is going home they always say within 5 kilometers of uh, medical help so that if she has got see uh, earlier on they had something called a home uterine monitoring system you know what they used to give them this apparatus and people were checking it at home but later the doctors found it was a nuisance value because they were woken up in the middle of the night and they were giving all the wrong calls because every contraction may need not culminate in a preterm birth so they were giving a lot of wrong calls so all that is actually gone no? so just ask her to come frequently for a checkup and then you just monitor everything see that everything is okay and she goes by do a regular scans regular fetal monitoring regular uh, drugs that she used to take her iron calcium etc et uh, okay madam last thing madam when you deliver um, uh, what are the see normal delivery patient can have what are the precautions uh, have to be told the patient like oh, uh, delivery uh, delivery of a preterm baby if how different it is from the delivery of a normal baby okay okay see now remember uh, delivery should be conducted in a tertiary care center with good neonatal facilities that is very important because many times she may come back after two weeks and again you know she might get into labor and neonatal counseling is preferred before the delivery continuous electronic fetal monitoring is preferred okay now uh, as a routine what antibiotic we give in labor that is important we give for group b streptococcus infection and what do we give we normally give ampicillin 2 grams iv and ampicillin is and you can give 2 grams 6 the early okay so you can continue that till delivery that is the antibiotic for a preterm patient epidural analgesia will you give it yes but will you use a fetal scalp electrode i may not not for fetal blood sampling it's not recommended before 34 weeks that's one then will you give a routine episiotomy or a Uh, no routine episiotomy is required formally we used to say that is not required no routine episiotomy no routine forceps to protect the fragile preterm and madam the but one, one thing you should are... remember vacuum should be avoided in avoided. a preterm ah. before 34 weeks no vacuum before 34 weeks and preferred mode of delivery is a vaginal route consider cesarean only for obstetric indications and studies have shown increased neonatal survival um that is the earth, the smaller the baby better the outcome with cesarean okay that is inversely proportional so a smaller the baby now like say a 27 week maybe she should be doing better off with a, a cesarean section rather than a vagina because as i told you all these preterm babes should never be born um, uh, hypoxic it. hypoxic that is very very important Okay, uh, and then I'll just say a few more. Then another thing is about the timing of the cord clamping. Ah, cord clamping. You That should is what at I least, said. yeah, you should at least wait minimum thirty seconds, um, or you can wait at least for a minute, okay, uh, before, uh, but no longer than three minutes. No longer than three minutes. That's one. And for the preterm babe, we also do the milking of the milking cord. Milking of the cord. We cut the cord ten centimeters long. Okay. and please remember the baby should always be held uh, below the level of the placenta don't hold the baby very high the baby is held very high what happens the blood will be lost down so the baby is actually losing blood so keep the baby below the level of the placenta that's very important cut the cord 10 cm long and milk it three times 1 2 3 uh, madam uh, they will ask you as the students i will be asked what is the advantage of delay in cording cord clamping what are yeah. the advantages for the baby yeah see when is anemia naturally yeah, the blood yeah. will go see actually you get you get about 80 ml more of blood so you don't have to give any of them transfusions to the newborn so they will not it is 80 ml of blood or 50 mg of iron that is what the baby gets so by the delayed cord clamping that's what the baby gains so you can uh, this is one condition we must do a delayed cord clamping and that is so that uh, the preterm baby gets uh this this extra amount of blood okay so the when i told you about the milking of the cord you take and uh, cut it 10 cm long and it is squeezed and clamped as soon 1 2 3 and then you clamp it